Right, hi everybody, good morning. Um, I just wanted, I posted about this in my last post and I referred you to previous posts and a previous video, but I thought I would just take you through it in a bit more detail. So this big piece here is three of these joined together. And my plan, I was gonna just add them, then work on them, but I figured if I started just putting together unstitched pieces, if it got to such a size, I would struggle to get to the middle of it without um, creasing it. And this is paper, so I can't damp stretch it. Um, <clears throat> it's all paper, the, the base, everything is paper, apart from if I've added some cloth bits like this to the surface. Um, so I did three and I joined them, okay? And then this is one that was in the image on my last post, it was unfinished and it's finished now, ready to be joined on. And I've also, these buttons are paper, um, made six more of these. I mean, the thing about making something in a free form like this that isn't patchwork or anything, that's just about the surface design, is having plenty of things to put on the surface, okay. So on this, these, I've got tiny little bits of vintage cloth. I've got some torn out pieces from a magazine. Some of the paper has got silk velvet stitched to the surface, so there's silk velvet as well. There's little hexagons um, and lots and lots of bullion knots because what I'm doing, and it's more evident on the one I've just started here, this is another one. One, two, three, four, five separate torn pieces of stitched paper there. They were pinned together, then they were basted, and every seam is being joined with bullion loops. Now, to me, that gives it a lighter, area feel. It's just frothy and I can't believe. I really wish you could feel this because there's such a delicacy going on here. It's incredible, I love it. So what I do with the paper pieces, I just stab stitch them down and then I've stitched some fabric, vintage fabric on here. And there's another little piece there. So I'm in the process of doing the seams now with bullion knots. Um, this seam here is going across there. Can you see that? How that lifts up. So that's that. And then I will come back and put one of these on somewhere. And also add hexagons, individual hexagons like this. And then the silk velvet areas will be edged with French knots. And in within those, there'll be some hand embroidery stitches in those colors. And those colors will stay the same for cohesion. And then also somewhere do a run of little frilly tufty things like that there so that one on there there's one on here there there's one here and there's one here okay so that's how it's going to progress so the piece that i've finished already i'm thinking is going to go here So that'll be pinned and basted, okay, and then joined with bullion loops. Um, I just love all the bullion loops. It's just making it more, more frothy, if that makes sense. So if I do a bullion loop here with you, um, and if you're not aware of this, I do 35 wraps. So the other thing to say is I much, much prefer to do bullion knots with my work in a hoop, but because this is paper, it's not always possible because going back to what I said a minute ago, I can't damp stretch this. So if I put it in a hoop and it gets creased, I can't do anything about that. So I'm doing my best, even though I'm finding it really uncomfortable to stitch without a hoop. I'm doing my best to do it without a hoop. So I'll do one more. Right, now my new class, I'm not sure if I'll be working on this in my new class, but 
if you were in the class and you did want to see it um, and talk about it and have a little bit more demonstration with regard to it I'm amenable to anything in embroidery school it's very open open class embroidery school basically I respond to you I, well I mean I do do it's a fly on the wall so I do work within that class but I'm very responsive to the needs of the group so but I will be making some of these in there and making some fabric ones as well um, I'll be doing titivations I think the first week is what I call them things that you can apply to the surface of embroidery okay um, so have a look at that class if you think you might want to see more of anything really anything on my blog and um, have a look because that, like I say I'm very receptive to the needs of the group very flexible so I'm going to keep working on this today I'm going to put another piece together I've already got lots of stitch papers to work with so I don't need to stitch any more papers at the moment um, but I just love it it's beautiful and I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with it it doesn't matter really what I do with it just having it will be enough for me but I just think I don't know, I'm wondering about a big frame and having it suspended, not flat to the back of the frame, having it suspended somehow, because it's just so light. It's beautiful, the, the texture. I'm not saying my stitching is beautiful, I'm not bigging myself up, but honestly, if you could feel this, I can't, it's just so light and frothy. Um, almost not there, if that makes sense. So there, it's a little explanation of what's going on here.